Hey folks, AJ the CEO here, and I am so excited about partnering up with this one company that I've been reviewing their software for a couple of months to get my head really wrapped around it. And I think it's a really, a really big game changer for your ministry. Now, let's be honest. We, our mission is to share the message with all generations, but I'm just being honest. My mom is 85 years old and she is not the most tech savviest person in the world. So I've done videos of showing how to implement um, sending your stream to uh, Facebook Watch, um, different ones on YouTube and other platforms to make it easy so they can watch from their TV instead of having to go to a phone, a tablet, or a computer. Now, one of the easiest things that I've played around with is sending your live stream audio to a phone like free conference call and other services like that. So where people can call in and hear that. Now there's some good and bad to doing that. Um, especially trying to tell everybody to mute their phone so we don't have to hear everything. But this one company reached out to me and their beginning started during COVID. And this guy is a developer and he took some time to write something for his ministry that just changed the game for everything. And this is phone live streaming. What does this service do? What does this service do? Well, what the service does is you take a line of code, put it into your streaming software, and you have a telephone number just like any of these other services. But the difference is every time you start live streaming, it will call everybody. So it's not anybody has to call in. It's not that anybody has to press a button to mute so that you're not hearing them talking or using the bathroom in the background. No, they register by calling a number, pressing a button to register their number. And every time your ministry live streams, they get a phone call. Sounds awesome, right? Let me take you into how simple it is to get this thing set up. And we're going to do this with OBS. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using version 28 or anything like that. This will work with it. And it is really slick. So let's bring this over here. Now, when you register, they're going to give you your own number, which is going to be the number that people call into to get registered, as well as the number that's going to be calling people when you start the live stream. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is go up here to settings. We're going to go to output. All right. Now we're going to go to advanced. All right. Now we're going to go to the recording tab. And we're going to change our type to a custom output. Now, how this is being used is it's just like how you would stream, but we're going to be putting this code in here and it's going to extract and receive nothing but the audio. Now, when you get registered, you're going to get a server host and a streaming key, just like um, you would do with any other service. So what we're going to do is go ahead and copy our, um, streaming URL, which I'm going to keep blocked here, blurred for me. And then we're going to use that same string and go ahead and put that at the end. So this is a complete, um, URL, All right? So we can, we don't have to worry about the video bit rate. So, cause it's not doing video. So we're going to put this low. Let's do this at 64. Um, your keyframes uh, doesn't matter, but we're going to put that at 30. And our audio bit rate, we're going to put that up because we want that to be as clear as possible. All right. And then we're going to, okay. And that's pretty much it. So now what I need to do is link my phone here so that y'all can hear what's going on when a phone call calls through. All right. So let's go ahead and call into the number. And I'm going to be doing this from my phone so that y'all can hear it. And I'm actually routed to the audio, my audio mixer. So y'all be able to hear. So you would give this number out to whoever and they dial in. Thank you for calling AJ, the CEO. If you would like to receive a phone call when AJ, the CEO is live, please press one now or just wait on the line for the stream. All right. I press one. You will now receive a phone call when AJ, the CEO, is live. All right. 
And now I hung up. Now, the next prompt normally would say, hey, if they're streaming right now, we'll go ahead and push you through. So if you were live streaming right there on the spot, they could be added. So in the future, they would get a call and it just goes over. Really straightforward. Now, let me actually set up a stream and you'll see how simple that is because I just set this up on my phone and I'm routed through. All right, so we're here over in OBS after we got everything set up for our stream. Now, what we're gonna do is come over here to settings again. And as you can see, the only thing we did is checked off the setting under here of recording to put our stream here. Now, one thing also we wanna do is when you're using this, is we want to engage our recording so that, um, you know, you can start streaming, but then hit the recording too. Or if you don't want to do that, you can check off automatically record when streaming. That way it will engage it at the same time. Be mindful of your space here because when it's recording, that's what it's going to do. So it's not going to be recording to an actual file on your computer. It's going to be recording by sending it to phone live streaming. All right. So we got that done. Now I got everything set up. I have my phone. Let's go ahead and start streaming, which engages the recording at the same time. And now we got a phone call. Let's answer that. This is a call to let you know that AJ, the CEO is live. Please press one to verify you are here. Press one. If you would like to no longer receive a phone call when AJ, the CEO, is live, please press 1 now, or just wait on the line for the stream. And we're just waiting for the audio to come through. One second while we get you connected to the live stream. If I cut back over here, that's what's coming through. Really slick. Very, very slick. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the streaming. So I've stopped it here. The stream has finished. Thank you for joining us today. We will hang up now. And that's it. That that is really, really, really cool. So for any type of implementation, you can add this inside of OBS. You can do the same thing um, in um, v um, vMix to send that stream out. And it just makes it simple from a user standpoint. That's the whole point. Again, we talk about adding all this tech, but how simple was that? That once it's registered, you would have a link that you just add inside of OBS or vMix. It has a, it acts as a second stream. You put that in there and then it goes out. And then all the people would have to do who are not tech savvy, they just call in a number and they register. You can do this at the end of service that if anybody was interested, you can just have them with their phone. You just hand them the phone, have them dial in the number and all they have to do is press one and that's it. They will be called when your stream starts really cool and they've written some um some coding that compress and handle um and enhance the audio because if you try and do music over most of these services the music is horrible but as you can hear it was clear they do some post-processing to make music very doable so again um, i'm gonna be sampling a little bit more of this at my church service so i'm actually going to have a link down below if you were interested in hearing our live stream um, with this service been implemented and we'll see how that goes for you. All right, folks. So, Hey, I already told y'all I walked through everything and I stopped the video a little bit because we actually got the creator here of phone live streaming. Um, David, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, AJ, thanks for having me. So I'm David. I'm the guy who accidentally created phone live streaming. I appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today. 
Awesome. Awesome. So again, uh, you know, y'all know, I always do different products and do reviews and from a ministry standpoint, and you know how this was started because before, well before COVID, but we just happened to be in a position that helped benefit a lot of ministries. And David, like he's saying himself, he kind of stumbled across this. So David, could you give me just a, a short synopsis, how this all happened? How was this whole program and everything came and what's your background? Yeah. So my my background is in uh, cloud computers, uh, cloud servers. So I was one of the big first users of Amazon Web Services. Uh, My teams have gotten a couple of awards in the corporate world and whatnot. Uh, But I volunteer at my small country church out here in rural Illinois. Uh, Lots of cornfields. Woo! And uh, and, um, so we, you know, when COVID started, um, even before COVID started unraveling, we started noticing um, elderly missing church, some of the people in the country had satellite internet and whatnot, weren't able to attend church. And we, we've been on Facebook, you know, five, six years, and these people weren't able to connect with, with that Facebook live stream. And so I started looking at different solutions. Um, and I'm sure you have too, you know, how do I connect to these people who are offline, who are traveling, um, who maybe aren't fortunate enough to have a solid connection, uh, whether it's they're in the country, whether they're under privilege, you know, whatnot. Um, and so I, I kind of built this, first version for my local church here. Uh, And and then one of my friends decided it'd be funny to post it on Facebook. So I sent a a little document to him like, Hey, you know, this help your church at all, you know, if you can, cool. And uh, like literally overnight, we had four people sign up on a Google form uh, I had created. Uh, And then within a month we had like 250 plus churches sign up on a Google form, no website, no branding, (laughs) you know, calling my cell phone at six o'clock in the morning. (laughs) Uh, it's, it's, it's quite the ride. Um, so I'm very much an accidental founder. Um, I, I lack a little bit of the professional fluff. I like to have fun and, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I guess from, so this was out of necessity that you, you made this to help your local community, but now it has been opened up to where you, you told me that you even had some governments that have reached out to try and use this tool as well. Yeah. Yeah. So like the first month after COVID, right? I'm working 14 hour days on my cell phone. It's just, it's nuts, right? So uh, I get an email and I can, I can show you the email uh, from a, a county out in California. And they're like, hey, I know you do this stuff for churches. Um, we had, you know, just finally gotten our, our website up, right? We're professional now. So we, we get this email. No, you do this stuff for churches. Is there any way you can do this for us? And uh, so I was like, you know, double the price and see what happens, you know, <laughs> I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but <laughs> yeah, so I sent out, <laughs> I sent out the, the, the email and like within 24 hours, they signed up. I was like, huh, okay, that's interesting. And so within like the next, you know, three to six months after that, we had four different governments from cities, counties, uh, regional municipalities from Canada, all these different people reaching out be like, Hey, I know you do church any way you can help work with us. And it's like, I guess, you know, kind of makes sense. It's a recurring event. You're trying to reach people. Like I'm all for it. So I guess from like, what's the, the people who've engaged and used this, how has it, has it changed with their ministry? Like um, being able to reach people, like you said, that um, have horrible internet connections, Facebook, YouTube, or not even just from a connection standpoint, just from the barrier of entry from understanding the technology that for us might be simple. Just click this link, put this code in, press this, that right there is like, like if, like with my mom, that's like climbing Mount Vesuvius to try and get that done. But I mean, what has been the, the impact? Have you heard back from the ministries who've actually been able to help those folks that this wasn't I mean, this is almost like a godsend for them. How, how's the reaction and feedback been with that? Yeah, so, uh, you know, the, the after the first month, everything kind of took off. I, I figured, you know, I, I probably want to get on the phone with these people and figure out how exactly they're using it, how exactly I can service them, because this is going to be a business that, you know, I need to try and run it like a business. And so I start talking with them. And, and one of the churches I talked to, like, I, I almost got in trouble with them. Because I was going through in my mind, you're like, hey, you're homebound. You know, yeah, we're getting homebound. We're getting le- like written letters from from them, from from their parents. Uh, one letter was like literally tear stained that came into a church and they, they sent us a copy of it. Um, of people that are actually able to um, interface with their with their local church. 
But I got in trouble because I didn't mention um, regular people, if you will, um, that are either on the go professionals or who are multitasking, say driving, exercising, this kind of thing, where it's easier to interact with the content via phone, uh, you know, via listening on a phone than, than watching on a phone, right? Uh, in most areas, it's illegal to have, you know, stuff on your phone while, while you're driving. And so people driving into work or, or driving on vacation or flying or whatever, you know, and it's a lot easier to, to take that phone call than to listen. And they said that actually the, the, the on-the-go professionals, as they call them, uh, was about 25% of their of their audience. So it just took what they already had and, and really magnified it, if you will. And there's all these nooks and crannies, uh, I, I don't know if that's the best way to describe it, of people uh, different groups of, of people, anywhere from, from you know, translation type lines to your rural to poor to homebound to sporadic attenders, attendees with, with health issues, uh, you know, busy students. We've heard about all these different categories that uh, it now is a whole lot easier for these people to interact with this content. They get the phone call. They can make a phone call, uh, take it on the go, um, you know, and, and just the, the, the overwhelming you know, I, I can't tell you how many stories we've heard of, you know, getting that magic phone call Sunday morning. You know, I'm, I'm connected to this faith community. Uh, I'm not forgotten. Uh, and really, uh, we started digging into it, right? Like, is this really, uh, is, this, is this a COVID fad? Um, is this something that's, you know, here today, gone tomorrow kind of deal? Is, you know, is, should, should I expect to be in business in, in two or three years, right? And so we started digging into it and looking into it, and, and I, I'm very happy to report. Um, actually, in November, we've had our highest usage ever, um, and we just continue to, to keep skyrocketing. But there's this huge kind of forgotten portion of the population, of this homebound, um, elderly with health issues, uh, this type, this portion of the, of the population. And... Um, there's something, and, and there's tons of studies I can I can provide links for, but like it um, missing uh, your your regular community, which we assume you know in this context is your faith community, is something to the equivalent of smoking like X amount of cigarettes per day um, it, 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 for an a elderly person. Um, and so just reading these types of studies where it's like it's literally detrimental to their health when you have to put something somebody into a nursing home or when uh, they have extended hospital stays, and they're kind of pulled away from their their faith community, right? If they're embedded in their church, they attend, you know, faithful, were a faithful attendee, and then for you know life reasons, they're just not able to attend. Uh, just the the health effects, um, and so us being able to provide that connection to them, um, you know, not only is it helping emotional uh, states, you know, reducing stress, that kind of thing, but it it gives them a sense of purpose. Still, hey, these people still value me. Hey, I can still be connected to my friends, to my peers, uh, to you know my my faith community, my my faith leadership, my my pastor, my my priest. Um, and so, I think that's kind of the 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 nerve that we hit, if you will, is that this has been an issue forever. Um, and you know, t telephone stuff. I'll be honest, is it really? high tech or flashy, right? This is like a hundred year old stuff. This isn't an, L an LED screen or, uh, you know, a, a new streaming 4k camera, uh, that, you know, that kind of stuff likes to get the, the attention. Um, but you know, real true, uh, ministry happens when you can connect with people and, and, and help, you know, uh, push people towards Christ. And, uh, you know, so this hundred year old tech, uh, putting a new, um, uh, infrastructure behind it, if you will, right? So we got this new automation connects with the live stream. You know, we got the patent on all this cool stuff, uh, but it's just it's, it's bringing all these people um, back, if you will, right? These all these disconnected communities that are kind of on the fringes um, can now connect back. And I like that because I think like the one of the other visions that I have with using this um, the service that you have is just like. I've been on this advocate of trying to get a, a community of churches to just raise the humongous amount of money of $35 and get each <laughs> church to raise $35 and donate a Roku to a nursing home just so that we can live stream and watch. But then I'm sitting back thinking, man, okay, now we got to make sure that they have Wi-Fi. We got to make, and it's a bunch of loops, but then 
when you presented this and I saw it, I was like, how easy is that to have a call being registered on at a nursing home and it's just you put it on speaker and everybody can hear it. That's that's not the Wi-Fi, it's not the, the TCP IP and D you know, it's none of that that needs to be done. And I mean, I, I really like the fact that like me in shameless promotion for me and anybody who's reach, tried to reach out, I don't, I only review stuff that I know that is kingdom mindset and it can help ministries. I've had tons of people, Hey, you want to review this vacuum cleaner? What is that? That doesn't help with anything. And that's why, um, I wanted to do this because after sitting down and talking with you, um, I, I can hear that you were put in a position in a timely fashion as this, that that vision that was given to you was able to help and minister and help touch and bring a whole lot of people in from the people who like even um, prison ministries that they, they can get a phone call. They can't do video or nothing like that, but they can still be connected or the truck drivers, like my best friend, he's a truck driver. And then where he can just call in and for that very same reason, you can't have video up and you can't do this. And I just think that this is a great tool that not necessarily just for the, um, a service, but it's going to allow to bridge that technology deficit that a lot of people have to where it's like, Hey, you no, I don't have a web camera, but guess what? You can still partake. You can still be a part of it. You're not getting secondhand information. You're actually an attendee listening in on what's going on. And that's what I love. And about the fact is like, it's takes five minutes, if not less to set up, which I think is great as well too. Um, so I guess, I mean, where, where do you see this going in the future? Uh, so our goal, uh, for the foreseeable future is just to educate people about this issue. This issue has been an issue for some time. Um, and I, I think it's going to, it, 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 I know it's going to be an issue ongoing. There's always going to be an, an elderly population. It's always going to be a little bit harder of seeing a little bit harder of hearing, uh, there's always going to be that type of, of population. Um, and I really want them to not be disengaged from their faith community moving forward. I see a lot of churches investing in their student ministry. I see a lot of churches investing in, in, in their family ministry, their their Sunday school. And, and that's awesome. That's good. I don't discourage that by any means. Um, but in, in the same regard, the, the senior ministry, the, you know, making sure that these people are kind of connected. Um, the, the flavor I get when I communicate with other churches is that th this is a high maintenance uh, community to, to interact with. Um, and, and that kind of discourages people from interacting with them, uh, which is really unfortunate. Um, but if, if we're able to interact with this community and help kind of bring them back uh, send them another lifeline, if you will, right? That's that's the goal. Um, keep them connected. And I mean, I don't want to sound salesy, but I want them to have as full a life as they can, right? And if if them being disconnected from their faith community is equivalent to, you know, X amount of cigarettes a day, well, that shortens your lifespan, right? So uh, if I can literally help expand somebody's life and make it more fruitful, I mean, that, that, that seems like a, a very... Um, decent thing that I can do. Plus, it's it's technology related, and so I think you know, with with uh, both hands, we can we can grab this and we can we can make it happen. Awesome, awesome. Again, um, thank y'all for reaching out to me. Thanks for bringing this to my attention. And again, the this platform that I have for here was YouTube was always meant for stuff like this. So I, I appreciate the fact that you actually listened. I appreciate the fact that you made this and made it available. And then just obviously God is blessing you with so many connections and the growth that's going on with your business for this product, because it's, it's needed. Just like you said, it is very much needed. And I just appreciate being able to bring it to the forefront of the people that I have that hopefully they'll come in and get some more, um, you get some more business from them as well too. Cause again, this is a great tool that I think can be used, not just from services. I mean, you can sit back and think that you can have somebody having a dedicated minister or pastor, just talk to this community and it can have something else completely different or, you know, expand out into prison ministry into truck driving ministry to where I can see a ministry. And maybe I'm giving some of y'all ministries an idea that you could have this type of ministry and you just have people call in 
I mean, register, and then they can hear a message whenever you got it. It doesn't necessarily have to be just your church ministry. It's a ministry in general. So um, you never know. I might even look at doing something if I if I can get some more time to go get into more podcasting and stuff like that. You never know. But David, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, let's go ahead and cut back over to this tutorial and we test out some more stuff using phone live streaming. Now, I didn't do it, but I could go through and give you a, like a back end look at what the app looks like. So if we cut over here, this is the command console. Now you can change the text in here at any point in time. You can put your church's name, whatever. I have AJ the CEO and I spelt it out because when I do how I spell it, it didn't sound right. So that's why I typed it out and he's using some text to speech to do that. There's the number I have admin console. So if I called in and I have a pin, I can get verified to know that I'm an admin. You don't have to worry about, um, um, muting people and I actually have my time zone is wrong. So let me change this to Eastern. Um, gotta love a settings, live notifications, um, voicemail check, send email when a caller is when a caller is um, added, um, call new subscribers if live. Um, it's a bunch of other things you could do. We keep coming through here, um, transfer active calls to live stream, timeout. You can set those settings. Um, your live video stream, this gives you your key and your information, which is blurred for me. Um, and then it actually works with Resi, a bunch of other ones. Um, like I said, I know from this command, it could work the same way with um, vmix i will test that out at a later time we have a web broadcaster so you could actually have everything done through the website if you wanted to um this gives you the information broadcast your number and here's the check um, um, unmute all callers when using the web broadcaster so it's almost kind of like a zoom type of thing um here and you can actually upload your own audio here if you wanted to and it's almost kind of like a playback of what happened which is really cool. And here's the phone book, which I'm, I'm preparing myself so that I can blur all of this. And this shows the people who are currently registered, unique numbers that are registered in here. Um, how many times has been called, how long they've been on, everything like that. Live notifications. Um, you can check off all of these settings. And it's really straightforward that even if you didn't want to do this, mine is still set up in the default. I don't have anything really checked off except for um, the things that, you know, changing my name, but it just made it straightforward. You can add your own custom greetings here. You can upload those files if you wanted to. Um, a welcome one, so I'm using still the default ones, um, as you can hear. You can add call to actions at the end. So if you want to engage and do other things, so think about this, if somebody um, at the end of a stream, you want to see about for discipleship or something like that. You can add a call to action where that gets routed out to somewhere else. Press two, if you want to get your soul saved and you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, you also have surveys, which is in beta, kind of like the same thing to a call to action. And you have a way to block numbers. So if people are spamming you and things like that, you can start selectively blocking people. And it's just as easy if I want to be removed from this. So say, I don't want to do this no more. So I'm going to go ahead and call again. And let you hear how to remove. Thank you for calling AJ, the CEO. If you would like to no longer receive a phone call when AJ, the CEO is live, please press one now or just wait on. You press one. You will no longer receive phone calls when AJ, the CEO is live. If you would like to receive a phone call when AJ, the CEO is live. So it asked again, just in case. Um, you made a mistake and boom. All right, we're removed. So now let's go back to our phone book. And you see that I have unsubscribed. So it keeps a list, but guess what? I'm not going to be called. If I go to this one, I will be called. So you'll still at least have a record of who called, but then they won't actively be called. You can export this list out and all this other um, cool and fun stuff, right? From an administrative standpoint, it's billing. Now, the way this ser service works, you're billed per minute on how much usage is being used. 
as well as uh, I think there's a monthly that goes with it as well, too. Now you have some settings. That's why I just went through. You can add multiple admins to the service if you want multiple people to manage it, which I think is always a good thing. Then they have some extras and some bonuses and how you can integrate this into podcasts and other um, APIs. You can even do this as a CD production um, and they will handle that. Um, and then they have support and then you can add new lines. There's a referral and everything like that. So let me know what other aspects of this you will want me to go over. This was just a initial and I want to actually interview the people who've actually made this and what the purpose of it is. Cause I mean, I don't want this just to be a tool. I want to put a face on the tool as well too, and why they actually did this. So if you like this type of content, appreciate a like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modern energy media ministry. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ. We'll catch you on the next video. Later. <music>